Hey there, welcome to this video on Midjourney, one of the very best AI generators to create and edit images online using a subscription plan. This is Zach, and today I will be your guide through this complete tutorial on how to use Midjourney on a private server, ensuring complete privacy for all your image generations. You can use Midjourney in two ways with your browser through the official Midjourney website, logging in with your Discord or Google account, or directly through the Discord platform. Sign up on Discord, link your account to Midjourney, and get access to the main Midjourney server and its rooms available for your use. For private image generations, you shall add Midjourney as your own private server. To do this, go to Add a Server on the left side, then choose Create My Own. Once done, locate the Midjourney bot on Discord and click on it. Then select Add App, Add to Server to add Midjourney privately and start generating images. Now let's see how to generate an image. Midjourney follows a text-based prompt, such as a textual command followed by a description and additional parameters to customize the result. To generate an image, type the Imagine command, followed by your prompt description. Midjourney will create four different images to review. Click on any image to check it, and locate the buttons from U1 to U4. These buttons upscale the resolution of a specific image. U1 and U2 correspond to the upper left and upper right images, while U3 and U4 are for the lower left and lower right images. Once the chosen image is upscaled, you can save it as the final image. Let's generate another image. This time, you can use the V1 through V4 buttons to create variations or remixes of the selected image, with an updated description if necessary. If this option isn't showing, you can enable it by launching the Settings command and turning on the Remix mode. Once you're satisfied with your image upscaled, open it and right-click to save it. You will get a PNG file with the default size of 1024 by 1024 pixels. Now, let's understand how to write a correct prompt in Midjourney. A good prompt should specify and describe the subject, the environment, the background, the style to use, and also add more details like color and vibe. You can generate images, but also text. Just consider to add quotation marks on the text to be displayed. Also, there is no possibility to generate vector files with Midjourney. Once you've selected an image, you get several options to modify it. Use Very Strong to remix the image using additional prompts for a more dramatic transformation. Alternatively, choose Very Subtle for minor modifications. With Very Region, you can edit only specific parts of the image. Enable the Rectangle tool at the bottom. Click and drag to select the area you want to modify and define a prompt for your modifications, matching the original subject to get the best results. Use Upscale Subtle to increase the resolution of the image by doubling its size. Or Upscale Creative to add minimal details on the image. You can also choose Zoom Out to zoom out from the subject, expanding the background. Click on the arrow buttons to extend the image in specific directions instead. With Midjourney, you can also do reverse prompting in order to extract the prompt that matches an image you've generated. To do this, type the Describe command and browse for the image. Midjourney will suggest four versions of the prompt that could have created that image. You can choose one to recreate the same image. 
or use the Imagine All option to try all four prompts for different variations. Use the Shorten command to optimize a prompt by generating shorter versions of it. Always double check if it is missing key details. Midjourney also allows multi prompting, such as defining multiple subjects while generating images. For example, if you type cupcakes, you get an image representing these. But if you type cup colon colon cakes, Midjourney treats these as separate subjects. So the image can feature either the first, the second, or both the subjects. You can also type cup colon colon two cakes to make cup the more dominant subject compared to the cake subject. Permutations allow you to generate arrays of images based on a list of subjects. For example, type the Imagine command and specify the prompt with your list of subjects inside braces and separated by commas. This will launch several generations, each with four variations and following one subject in the list. Permutations work best in fast mode as we will see later in this video, and usually active by default. Midjourney can also perform real image generations by providing a reference image. If you have an image online, copy its link and type the Imagine command, followed by such link. Add other options you like and generate. For offline images, click the plus button, go to upload a file, and browse for the image. Once uploaded, right click on the image and select copy link. Then you can use the imagine command along with this link as seen before. You can also merge two images with the blend command. Type blend, upload two to five images, and hit enter. Midjourney will merge them together for a new and original result. The command parameters are very useful to fine tune the result of your generations. These are placed by adding two hyphens and a specific keyword at the end of your prompt. The S or stylize parameter allows you to control the AI creativity up to a value equal to 1000. A higher value makes the AI more creative while a lower value makes the image more aligned with the exact description of your prompt. The C or chaos parameter sets the randomness level for your image generations up to 100. The higher the chaos value, the more randomness is introduced, which can result in varied subjects or backgrounds. The Q or quality parameter adjusts the quality of the generation between 0 and 2. The value 2 may take longer to generate, but will result in a more detailed image. Midjourney allows negative prompting in order to exclude certain elements from your generations. Add the no parameter followed by what you want to avoid separated by commas. The tile parameter generates repetitive patterns or textures based on your prompt while the weird parameter adds unexpected or unusual elements to your generation with a value between 0 and 3000. This differs from chaos since the prompt instructions are always followed. With the AR parameter, you can define the aspect ratio of your generation by specifying a width colon height ratio. The seed parameter is used to control the randomness of the generations the same seed number gives very similar results in the generations. To retrieve a seed number from a generated image, send it to yourself by going to Add Reaction, then clicking the envelope icon. Copy the seed number shown and add its value to the seed parameter before launching a new generation. With the CREF parameter, you can generate images while keeping the same character as a reference. Just type dash dash CREF, 
followed by the URL of a reference image. For more information on these parameters, check out the official page in the video description. All images generated in Midjourney are public by default, unless your plan includes the stealth mode, which keeps your creations and prompts completely private. For more details on this, be sure to check the official documentation linked in the video description. Each generation consumes your monthly GPU time, based on your subscription plan. The time used depends on the chosen speed between relax, fast, and turbo modes that do not impact the quality of the final result. We suggest to use the relax mode to enjoy slower and unlimited generations. Use the info command to check your account details, subscription, and GPU time left, and launch settings to configure several options for all your generations. For example, you can set a default suffix, such as a stylized parameter value, and also select the algorithm model. For instance, switch to the Niji model to create images with an anime or manga style. Enable RAW mode to better match the generated image to your prompt with more precision, and enable public mode to allow free use of your images. Select between high or low variation mode to adjust the variation level when remixing the images with the V buttons, and control the generation speed between relax, fast, or turbo modes. And that's it for Midjourney. For more tips, help, or advanced techniques, please be sure to check out the Midjourney documentation. Also, make sure to check out our YouTube channel and our official website for more tips, help, and insight on how to use AI tools and unlock your creativity.